so um, is this, is on, can you guys hear me? So you know, I basically, you know, I think some kids watch football with their dads. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I had I, I brought a, a girlfriend who went home from college, and uh, you know, she took her home to to meet meet my dad, and, and we went to some restaurant. She said for two hours she she uh, moved her peas around with the fork while my dad and I just screamed at each other <laughs> about, I mean, I think it was probably literary theory. I mean, I don't even remember, right? I mean, sometimes you just don't remember what the argument was about. You know? Who cares what the argument was about? It's the argument. And, and dad was totally like that. Like, he he just loved the argument. You know, he, he told me once that it was just a chess board. You know, like philosophy, all 2,000 years of philosophy was one chess game with a set of rules. And the thing that drove me most crazy was people who didn't respect the Right. So if you came up, if you didn't understand, you didn't back up your argument, they drove me nuts, right? Because that's just stupid, right? There's a set of rules, intricate rules, going all the way back thousands of years. And so you say this, and it's like moving your pawn too, and then somebody says this, and you move your knight here. And so now you have this beautiful chess position. And he, I don't think he really cared about who won the game. I don't think he, I mean, all this stuff, it's great. You know, I, I mean, he definitely had views about science. But, you know, it's, and their Supreme Court justices, like the conservatives and the liberals who like each other are like this, right? That, that, that I, I can't remember which one, but, but you know, they don't want to hang out with the stupid people who agree with them, right? They want to hang out with the people who disagree with them in an interesting way. Right? So, so Dad had strong views about science. I mean, he, you know, this, you know, he had really strong views about science. But he would much rather talk to you if you disagreed with him and could argue and move and, and write, because it would be an interesting position on this chessboard that he kept in his head, right? And nobody else could keep that much information in their head about this chess game. This is a 2,000-year-old chess game, right, that has millions of rules, and nobody else knew the rules like that, right? And so you couldn't win, right? Like, like he decided that, that you were going to do, he decided that you were wrong or he was just going to mess with you. And you know, again, it wasn't really that he, he, he was going to, he thought you were wrong, he just wanted to mess with you. He wanted to see what you were going to do. And so he just moved the pawn over here, and he knew that you had to respond this way, because, you know, you believe this. And so he, he was going to do this, and he was thinking four moves ahead of you. But right? you had no chance. No chance. I think everyone in this room had that experience at least once of having no chance, right? Knowing that you were right, right? <laughs> Knowing that natural selection is important in biology, right? You know, right? you can measure it in the genome, right? You can see selective sweep. It's important. You can measure. It doesn't matter. You had no chance. You had no chance. So it was a gift in some ways. You know, sometimes I. You know, like I, I, I coach my kids basketball. It's not really true, but you know, like basketball's the orange one. Because there are things that I didn't know that other kids knew. But then there was this gift of just, you know, being able to think six moves ahead of people. And you know, I'm a college professor now. So when I went to graduate school, um, we have journal clubs, and you know, in journal clubs, you know, mostly, you know, somebody says to you, "Oh, we did your paper in journal club." You don't think, "Great." <laughs> you think, "Oh God." <laughs> right? And and so you know, journal club, your, your goal is just to rip people's work to shreds, right? And my graduate advisor told me he, you know, from day one, I could rip people's work to shreds like he had never seen them, right? And that's because some kids watch football with their dad. But in my house, growing up, you know, when you were eight years old, it was like, well, do you think there's a God? Why? Why not? You know, I mean, that was sort of how he related to that. It's what he loved me more than anything else, right? And, and he was, you know, there's that, um, we had totally different tastes in, in, in music. I mean, in some ways, I think it was a huge disappointment to my dad. I mean, I, to my dad, I, I still can't really even look at a sailboat without kind of wanting to throw up. <laughs> like, I just, he would put me on a sailboat. Sit down. He would put me on a sailboat, and I would throw up, and then just go to sleep. And that was my, <laughs> something about my inner ear was wrong. Right? I, I, I tried so hard to love opera. I tried, I tried <laughs> so hard. You know, but I, I kind of like the Rolling Stones. <laughs> so there's a there's a there's a Ryan Adams. So and one of the people my dad would hate. There's a Ryan Adams song I've been obsessed with. It's a uh, uh, duet with Emily Harris uh, called My Sweet Carolina. And uh, it, it turns out Nick Hornsby, who's this writer that I like, was also obsessed with the song and wrote an essay about it. And in this essay, he said that that Ryan Adams just seems so miserably unhappy in this song, right? And the song is just this pure perfection of, of pain. And then Ryan Adams got really happy in his next album, um, Heartbreaker, but, and, but his happy stuff. And, you know, I think Dad was a little like that. He, he, he was very sensitive, right? And he was, there was this sad, this wistfulness to him. But the thing about people who are sad sometimes is that, that you know, they're in, when, when they engage with something, right, they just engage all the way. Dad was like that. When you were with him, you know, he loved opera so much 
that it was, he loved ballet so much, he loved arguing philosophy so much. It was impossible not to get caught up in that, sucked into it. And, and that's what I really loved about being with my dad. And I think that was a gift that he gave me. And you know, I think that sadness runs in my family. I think we've all got a little touch of it. <laughs> uh, genetics or environment or, or whatever. But, but that ability, I, I'm not sure that you could separate the sadness from, from the engagement and all. So, so I really miss him. Um, uh, I mean, I, I really do. It's still hard for me. He was like a force of nature. I think people said that too. It's hard for me to believe he's gone. I still, all the time, think, ah, oh, man, this is a really interesting art. I wonder what dad would think for work. This is a really great amplifier. I bet Dad would really like this. And, and it's just hard to not be able to pick up the phone and, and call them up. So, so I appreciate everyone coming here. And, and I guess that's all I've got to say. <laughs>